Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Panzer Corps II, an upcoming turn-based strategy and war game being published by Matrix and Slytherin Games. This is part number two of our first look at the North African campaign, the campaign that starts in 1941 and basically follows the sort of campaigns of Erwin Rommel uh, in sort of mid-early 41 uh, through to presumably the Allied counterattack, you know, out, out to Al Alamein, then the Allied counterattack and the drive into Italy. Uh, we'll see how that all plays out. If we're successful, I think it will open up a uh, path into the Middle East. At least that's how the uh, Panzer General One campaign would find out. This is part number two of our first look at North Africa. Uh, this was taken from a live stream from my channel from a couple of days ago. So I'm going to go ahead and step out, and we're just going to jump back midway through the first battle of the first uh, of the first North African campaign. So I'm going to sign out. I'll go ahead and rejoin myself in the live stream, and I hope you guys enjoy. I'm sick of these enemy aircraft, and I can't even fly out that way. So I've got to rebase. There's no point in engaging him quite yet. Because if I do that now, I won't be able to finish him off anyway, and I'll take casualties to no real purpose. I still can't base my uh, Heinkel out of there. I don't know why. Okay. All right. I don't really want to deal with driving these guys really far into the desert. I would like to just finish him off. At least we'll get some flack at him. We finish him. We'll finish that unit off over there. We'll pull our recon car back. Um, some of these guys don't really have a lot of experience, and so I'm I'm happy to spend a turn sort of pausing and reinforcing. It feels much less restrictive, this game, without the um, huge supply penalty that I elected to take in the last playthrough. So we're, we're focusing up in the north here on Mechli. We've got a couple of troops guarding our flank here from this armor and this infantry that was attacking west out of Tediger last turn. But the fuel resupply seems to be slightly better. Actually, substantially better than last time. I'm not quite sure, other than that it seemed like last time when we had the supply penalty, we only received one fuel reinforcement per turn, which was pretty damn devastating. All right, this Italian flame floor tank overruns that uh, enemy artillery and then advances forward here along the coastal road to take the village of Bars. Artillery will pound the port. Suppress these guys. Let them retake Benghazi, but only for a moment. Okay, so we'll advance our uh, artillery along this valley here along the coast. Hit that infantry with our Stug, the infantry that are in the mountains. Aus Aus Aussie infantry in the mountains there. Yeah, when you take the, the penalty, the logistic penalty, it seems like you get only one fuel. Every Like, each hex that you move costs one fuel, I believe. And when you take the penalty, 
you it seems like you only get one fuel reinforcement per turn. I'm not sure. I haven't really been constrained in any way in this battle yet, so I'm not sure yet. I don't have a good sense on how it works without the penalty. That'll do it for turn number five. We'll move on to turn number six. Damn, enemy aircraft keeps strafing us. Enemy counterattack keeps coming on. One casualty there, two casualties there. I'm assuming the infantry will pursue as well and inflict more casualties, or the air will come in and bomb us. More bombers up in the north. Armor counterattack here just south of Mechley, driving our, in our armor back. A whole bunch of nearly dead units here. Their uh, anti-tank guns are attacking out of the hills. Meanwhile, up here in the north, infantry is attacking with incredible advantage from the high ground, although the Italian flamethrower tank did pretty did pretty well against them. We'll have our artillery pound them. Alright, so we drove them back. We'll continue the advance along the road. Move our infantry here, the first Bez Bezeragi, or however you pronounce that, into the mountains. They knock out that enemy unit. So that's great. We'll advance our infantry here along the northern route. While we're kind of getting stuck up here near Macali, we may be able to flank them along the coastal road. Do we still have air back here? We do. Let's go ahead and rebase these Heinkels this turn forward to Benghazi. Move our armor forward here against these Vickers. Go ahead and attack these Vickers in that direction. Maybe we'll drive them back. We did, not quite where I wanted to. All right, so this is an enemy Spitfire, so we're going to go against the Spits with our fighters. So we did five to one casualties there. Then our second 109 came in here, shot them down. Our 110 will come up here and engage the enemy bombers here, the Blenheim Mark 1s. That was a good result. Okay, 2 to 7, wow. Let's do that. The second Grenadiers drove back that enemy infantry. Um, these anti-tank units here. Oops. So we probably should use our Stukas here to some effect. So we'll use them here against these Crusaders. The Vickers, despite the fact that they're almost dead, a little bit less important. So we'll use, um, because they're a little bit less effective. So we'll use our air against those two Crusader units there. Go ahead and reinforce here. Move this armor, these Panzer III, to the south here to finish off this Crusader. Got it and destroyed it, overran it. So we're able to continue the advance and attack. Drove back that uh, Crusader, doing some substantial damage. That's a good result for us. We can move this Panzer Jagger, or however you pronounce it, over here against these guys. Drove them back. All right, that might actually be just about it for this turn. <laughs> I would not call my butcher emote holding a weapon, charcoal. I do not think that counts as a weapon. Just saying. Right, that infantry can advance, but they can't attack. They've already attacked. Let's move them over there on the flank. Probably to go after this quick-firing two-pound anti-tank gun. That's my thought. Move our Stug forward. 
All right, so we've detected more enemy infantry in this pass here. It looks like they're Australians in the north. That'll do it for our move, but we do have some money left over, so I am going to go ahead and purchase more units. I think we'll go for a overstrength Panzer III. I don't know where I can deploy it. Oh, we can deploy it at Benghazi. That's nice. Although, I mean, Benghazi does seem like it's a little bit further forward, but I want to swing it south and east. And then we'll keep the rest of the money. Can I, reinf can I buy these guys more cheaply? I don't really understand the purpose of showing me the Fallen if there isn't like a... Hey, buy these guys cheap. I'm not quite sure. Alright, so we have 300 prestige left for reinforcements, which we will need, so we'll go ahead and move forward there. I'm just trying to make something out of nothing over there, Charcoal. It is merely a butcher doing his job cleaving meat. Alright, infantry is going to counterattack the Stug. Didn't actually do anything. One suppression and that's it. And it counterattacked with three suppression. Alright, so this anti-tank gun just cut off our infantry over here. But really to no effect. Let's go ahead and bomb them. Nice! Stuka knocked that anti-tank gun that had been such a pain in the ass out. Go ahead and attack at Mechley. I'm going to move my uh, Heinkel down here too. Although I think I probably should move my fighters to knock out this enemy hurricane first. So we got it. That was a good result there. So the enemy aircraft was shot down. Now we'll move our Heinkel over here to hit these troops. Okay. All right, so this infantry, I think, will move forward here. There is enemy artillery. Oh, I didn't see that we could move in behind and... and deal the enemy artillery blow. Although it didn't end up mattering. The enemy retreated anyway. So we'll advance here. We'll take the city. Then we'll attack the artillery. Attack the artillery again. Have Rastuka go finish the artillery off. Got him. Um, are there any other enemy aircraft? It looks like we've wiped out their air force for the most part. So we've got the 110 here. I guess let's go after this enemy armor. We'll have our fighters strafe the armor too. Alright, so this guy's going to get 1 to 4 against the enemy infantry. 1 to 3. 4 to 0. So I was kind of using my, my units in a way that I wasn't hoping to. Alright, so we just knocked out that enemy. Advance forward into that town and take it. All right, so we took the town in the south, we took the town in the north, and now we can drive to the gates of Tobruk. So that's a good result there. What do we have left? I wish it would... Why is it not auto-moving me to the units in question? All right, bombard there. Bombard there. Move up high ground, attack this town. All right, the armor will chase.
drive them back further. So we're having success all over the map at this stage of the battle. Because at this point with the breakthrough in the south and in the north, the question is where is the armor better served? Probably in the south if only because there's a wider front where we can where we can use it more effectively. Reinforce that infantry. All right, so that's going to do it for turn number seven. Moving forward to turn number eight as we close in on... The I abandoned that city and the enemy moved in to retake it. They also attacked north against that armor and encircled it. There is still some enemy air force up in the north bombing our lead elements of Stugs there. All right, so their infantry is not really something I'm too worried about over here. So our second grenadiers attacked and wiped out that last remaining British infantry unit in the north. Or I guess the center of the line. I'm going to bring my Stukas forward here. Do some damage to the enemy armor formations. Let's get our fighters up here against these enemy bombers. Still haven't shot them down, but... I think we're at least neutralizing them. All right, so we knocked out that enemy armor. We can advance forward here and take this town. All right, we'll hit these Vickers. Looks like we're gonna overrun them destroy them so that we can advance again and attack again against these crusaders who retook that city so we can advance with these panzer 3g's take it we take the town there move our recon unit out east to see what we've got in store for us at the edge of this map looks like we've got one strong point a concrete bunker here they've got some aussie infantry the fifth and the eighth We've also got additional troops, some Aussie troops and heavy weapons troops in the rear. So it's going to be a tough battle here to finish things up against them. I'm guessing they won't come out to play. They'll probably stay behind their fortifications. But I guess we'll see. Okay. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. All right, so we'll hit them with artillery, then drive them back, pursue them with our... Aussie flamethrower tanks overrun and destroy them, but I'm not actually going to pursue. I'm going to take that moment to reinforce these guys. And so we destroyed another British unit, but now we have some armored cars here at this airfield in the north. We'll probably want to rebase to that airfield as it'll give us better access to the final objective as soon as we can. You know, this, pan, uh, this Panzer 3H needs to move to the front. Let's hit those Daimlers just to make sure they don't try anything silly. Alright, so that does it for turn number 8. We're moving forward to turn number 9! Alright, so nothing happened. The British bomber fell back and, and got reinforced. I'm going to fly my 109s up there and probably finish him off. It's not strong enough, I don't think, to survive. 
And he doesn't. He crashes. Down he goes. Okay, so now I think we need to balance... Like if we hit this guy, it's only one suppression. It's only one on both. But I can't get out to the... forward base there yet. I guess that guy will go after the Daimlers. This Stuka will just reinforce. These Stukas will bomb. Zero to six. Wow. That's a good result there. I actually killed seven of them. We'll pursue. Push them further back. Meanwhile, our Panzer Jaeger is going to come up here to attack this airfield. Because this airfield, I think, is going to be central to our ability to win this battle. So we'll go ahead and shift some troops north to support there. Meanwhile, our Flamethrower Italian tank just knocked out two enemy units. Those Italian tankers are heroes. And now we've taken the Australian airbase in the north here, gained 100 prestige. And now we can move these guys. Oh, shoot. Can I undo that? I could move further. So now we can move all of our artillery and troops forward here to support the drive on the final two objectives. As all of the enemy troops in our way have been destroyed... I don't even think there's any enemy bases other than the edge of this map that are still in enemy control. All right, so we're going to rebase up here. Probably most of the rebasing will occur next turn. We're taking this turn to reinforce, spending all of our prestige pretty much. Oh, no, don't do that. Pretty much all of our prestige reinforcing. I did it again. I focused it like I was like, oh, let's do elite reinforcements for everybody. We can afford it, and now I have no money. Fortunately, most of our units are in good enough shape. That's such a problem that I, I have. I'm just addicted to like, I don't want to waste the experience I've gained. Ugh. All right, was that everybody? That recon car can do a little bit more work. So there's an enemy anti-aircraft gun that is going to make our fighter's life a little bit more difficult. There's two strong points. But the thing is with the anti-aircraft gun, again, we have three artillery pieces that we can bring in that should help us. We could even use the artillery to suppress the anti-aircraft, then bring in the attack aircraft. Either way, we're about halfway through the turn. Okay, so we get a little bit more prestige this turn. I'm going to rebase. I think I need to rebase all my aircraft. Because I don't think anyone can reach the front from there. Hopefully our Heinkel can rebase up there. It can. Okay, good. I'm trying to see, is that base bigger? Does it, like, look noticeably bigger than the other one? Looks paved. The desert one I don't think is paved. I think that's just a desert strip. Yeah, it doesn't look as built up. I don't know if that matters or not, but it just, by appearances, it doesn't look as built up. Okay, let's move this artillery down here. Move our infantry out front. I don't want to quite be adjacent to them yet. I'm going to hold off a turn on that. I want to slowly roll in. So if they're going to... If they want to leave their fortifications and come engage me, they can do that. All right, so we went with all pretty much green reinforcements this turn. We've 
got most of our artillery in range. Okay. Air Force just redistributed, so they'll be ready next turn. So I think we're almost ready to begin the assault. Man, you can see those casualties are going to be real heavy. The fort is actually weaker. That's the interesting thing. The strong point is weaker than the infantry. Alright, so the enemy didn't do anything. So I am going to go ahead and start bombarding these troops in the north. Three suppression in both cases. I'm going to go ahead and hit them with my Heinkels. Enemy anti-aircraft is going to come into play here. But between all of the suppression that we gave, we can now inflict three to seven losses on them with our heavy infantry and drive them out of the post. Move our artillery south. I don't even think I used all my... I didn't use all my artillery. Alright, let's go for knocking out this enemy Fort 2 to try and expand the breakthrough. Then we can go ahead and inflict heavy losses on the enemy infantry that we already drove back. They surrendered. That's good. Okay. Being a little bit careful with my aircraft here at this stage, because I don't want to take losses if I don't have to. Go ahead and reinforce these guys up here in the north. Most of them don't need too much, so they shouldn't lose too much experience. Move our assault gun south. Infantry will move in here to take this base. We'll have our armor swing around here and attack the enemy artillery, which should help weaken their defense. I really need to get as much infantry as I can as far south as possible. And that anti-aircraft gun is critical. Meanwhile, that fort attacks our tanks and deals quite a bit of damage. Fortunately, they withdraw before the enemy can launch another attack against them. Enemy artillery here launching a counterattack against our infantry. And the forts are shooting at our tanks, inflicting heavy losses. Okay. So we'll go ahead and hit those forts with artillery. Everybody's one to one. Our heavy infantry comes in here. The fort just makes things a pain more than anything. Can we 
hit them with air and finish them off. We'll take some flak, but I think it's worth finishing off the fort. Alright, so that enemy position is gone. The thing is, when you're attacking fixed positions like this, it's kind of like, alright, get your infantry south, because that's what matters. Great to move some of those units into the airfield, though, so we can get them adjacent to the enemy anti aircraft. Unfortunately, I can attack there, but then I can't pull back out. Why is that a 7 to 1 against that fort? How much stronger is it? I don't see any reason it should be 7 to 1. That's weird. Alright, we're going to try and go for that Bar Hatchem village next turn. I'm not sure if Tobruk is an objective or not. It's a circle, so it's a supply point with a half, half circle there. But I'm not sure if it's actually a supply point or not. Right, so the fort attacked our tanks there, did a fair bit of damage. We did counterattack a little bit. There are artillery and infantry and whatnot are launching counterattacks in a couple of different spots here on the map. Drove those panzers out of that objective. They didn't move in to retake it, though. They're not abandoning their strong fortifications. Um... Okay. All right, so we drove the infantry out of that last objective. Move the armor in here. Take the objective, and that's a victory. Apparently, we don't have to take the supply location. So we win a victory, we get to the edge of Tobruk, we take some heavy losses, but we inflict pretty heavy casualties too. All in all, I think I'm pretty happy with this result. Uh, I think it's a solid one. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. Stein2883. Well, I must admit, Herald General, I'm impressed. Your execution of Rommel's plan was a stunning success. But unfortunately for you, the British have also taken notice and here to warn, uh, and I'm here to warn you that they're gearing up for a major counterattack as we speak. Battle Axe, 15 June 1941. Your British opponents have just received a major resupply of equipment and tanks, and they're going to be throwing it directly at your forward positions in this region. Primary objective, def defend all victory hexes. I'm recommending setting up a defensive line on this ridge here, along the easily defensible in, in, uh, escarpment. Is that a word? Escarpment? Here. Anchor your center in this desert fort here. Repulse their hasty offensive with all your might. That is an absolute minimum I expect for you. Should you have the strength for it, I think this could be a golden opportunity to not just beat the British, but rout them entirely. See if you can penetrate the enemy lines as far as these towns here. Capturing both should cement that route, and we'll see if we can't deal with that thorn in our supply chain at Tobruk. Okay. So we got a hero for the last battle. Looks like this one we're going to be on the defensive. There's no objectives to take, but there are secondary objectives. So we have to control our objectives at the end of the battle. So I'm assuming there's going to be a strong enemy counterattack. I mean, if we just take regular reinforcements rather than elite reinforcements, I'm hoping we have enough to get back up to full strength. You can see we lose quite a bit of our unit's experience, though. But yeah, it looks like we've actually got a little bit of prestige to spare. Which is probably good. We need, we'll need reinforcements. We could buy slightly, you know, another unit or two or overstrength someone or something. Maybe a little bit more infantry. Looks like the Italian infantry from last turn wasn't core. 
We do get some free Italian units here along the coast as well in this battle. Um, but with that being said, guys, it is a little bit late. I know this is only an hour. It's only the first battle in the North Africa campaign. And unfortunately, because of the way they're handling this key, I won't be able to play any more. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video, this first look at the North African campaign. I enjoy it. I think, I, I will admit, I played one or two of the Russian scenarios in the previous version of, of the game they gave us. And I was a little bit overwhelmed with just how massive they are. And I understand the Russian front was big. But I think there's a... Sometimes there's a challenge to properly balance things so that it doesn't just become a slog and unenjoyable. The North Africa campaigns are a really good size and really fun to play. The Western European invasion scenarios, likewise. Honestly, I think I might find myself playing more of those than I would be on the Russian front. And if given a choice, I would much rather fight in the desert than in Russia. But I'm sure most German uh, infantrymen would have said the same thing uh, in uh, 1940. Maybe not 43, but certainly in 42. With that being said, thanks again for coming out. Stein, thanks for continuing the subscription. Melk, thank you very much for the raid. Um, Charcoal, uh, thanks for the encouragement and all the emoji discussion. And as always, guys, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer once again saying thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.